and they were on my face. I was looking for my phone and it was on my ear. We're looking around for what we already possess on the inside of ourselves. God gave you a gift and you got to use it to enhance somebody else. My brother, you are not a statistic, you are a standout. You're not a liability, but you're an asset to your community. You have the resources because you're connected to the source that God has placed in your life. And in churches across America, we sing the song that says, I am what God says I am. But you're also what you say about you too. Right. Because you are the sum of what you say about yourself. Uh, yes, you have to understand in life that people will tell you what you're not. If you can't believe that, but you have to buy into the future that God has placed on the inside of you. We believe the lie that says we are at risk, at risk of killing someone or being shot. They've been telling you that you've been at risk all your life, at risk of being shot, at risk of shooting somebody else, at risk of going to prison, at risk of dropping out of high school, at risk of doing negativity in your community. But you ought to let them know tonight, I'm at risk of not doing four years in a prison house but I'm at risk of doing four years in courthouse. Yes, You're not at risk of going to jail. You're at risk of going to Cornell and Yale. You're not at risk of doing something negative, but you're at risk of doing something good in your hood because we've got to change the narrative and tell the story that one out of three black males goes to college. Three out of four are drug free. Yes. Five out of nine have jobs. Seven out of eight are not teenage fathers. Four out of black, five black fathers living with their children read to them. 82% of black males have at least a high school diploma or a GED. 25% of black males 25 and over have an associate's, a bachelor's, a master's, a professional, or even a doctorate degree. We've got to tell our story. Black high school graduates are three times more likely to be in college or employed than unemployed. We are black men who do something positive. And too many of us look like a lion, but we sound like a kitten. We talk a good game, but we don't produce. We dogmatically bark, but have no bite. And the bite is in the fight. We can't roll over and play dead anymore, but we got to get up and do something with all the gifts that we have, with the ability that God gave you to not be able to just say, I'm just going to exist and look good, but I'm going to do something positive in my life and in my situation. Look at somebody and tell them, I am my brother's keeper. Because you're watching America's Got Talent, but do you know your talent? Do you know your gift? You watch Dr. Phil, but you still don't feel any better. Maybe you ought to turn off BET, ABC, MTV, and turn on G.O.D and say, is there a word yes, from sir. the Lord? Yes, because our young people know the voice of Beyonce, Jeezy, Weezy, Easy, and Jay-Z, but they don't know the voice of Jesus. Because he said, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. We're losing too many of our brothers, and the time has come that we must say, if you're not going to fight with me, on the front lines, then don't get in my way, but stand on the sidelines. Because we're watching power, but we don't have any. We're watching empire, but we won't build one. You got to build your empire, because it's not about chasing money, but it's about you chasing purpose. And when you chase purpose, money will chase you. Uh, when you pursue your purpose, you have to understand, as Malcolm X declared, nobody can give you freedom. Nobody can give you justice or equality. If you're a man, you got to take it. You got to take it because the kingdom of heaven suffering violence, but the violent take it by force. And we're adequately prepared to get to heaven, but inadequately prepared to deal with the hell that our brothers and sisters are facing. We're having church on Sunday, praying, singing songs, and shouting, but our brothers and sisters are dying in the streets. Maybe we need to go into the streets and pray. Maybe we need to go into the streets and sing songs. Maybe we need to go into the streets and feed the homeless because there's a generation of young people coming into our churches who know hip hop, but they don't know hymns. They know Jay-Z and Jeezy, but they don't know Jesus. They know how to fight, but they don't know spiritual warfare. They know how to cuss, but they don't know how to pray. They don't have church attire, 
better, but they do have a desire to be better. The question is, will we embrace them? Will we show them some love? Look at that neighbor, tell them SOS. SOS. Tell them scoot over some. Scoot over so the dope man can come in. Scoot over so the drunk man can wobble on in here. Scoot over till the weed man puts the weed down and picks up the word. Because we demonize and criticize our brothers for their sagging pants. We demonize and criticize them for sagging goals and sagging grades. But guess what? They're coming from sagging communities. They're coming from sagging homes. They're coming from sagging schools. They're coming from sagging churches. But if we pull up the church, if we pull up the home, if we pull up the school, if we pull up the grades, if we pull up the relationship, my God, he'll pull up his pants. I'm not ready to get up out of here tonight. But you have to understand that we're not fixing black males. But we have to build our brothers to let them know that I am my brother's keeper. You've been a predator and a destroyer for far too long. But now it's time to be a hope healer and a hope dealer to let us understand that true masculinity is vulnerability. Me being vulnerable to share with somebody in my life because vulnerability is not femininity, but vulnerability is true masculinity. And when I understand that there's a king that's inside of me, then I'll look at my sister and say, there's a queen inside of you. Because we wear the S on our chest and we think it's all about our money. We think it's all about our muscles. We think it's all about our Mercedes to where we pulled up to the scene with our ceiling missing. But the S on our chest doesn't always mean we're strong. Sometimes it means we're struggling. But do I have a brother who will fight with me? Do I have a brother in this house who will pray with me? a brother in this house that says, guess what, I'm not just a male, but I'm a man, because man means to maintain, man means to manage, man means to understand that I have a destiny that's on the inside of me. Give that brother a high five. Tell him I am my brother's keeper. Ah, uh, yes, because oftentimes we're angry and we don't even know why. We're suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. Break. Because if you come from communities like I do, it's liquor store, gas station, strip club. Can I be real to you tonight? Oh, it's liquor store, McDonald's. Uh, we got more weed stores than we got grocery stores. And people are high on drugs, but they're low on their dreams. How do you keep your dream alive oh, when you're living in a nightmare? And we become so numb to pain that now it hurts to be happy. We mask the pain drugs. We mask the pain with how many women we got in our phone book. We mask the pain with alcohol and sex and violence and self-destructive behaviors when we really need a brother to not look down on us, but to look up and say there's greatness that's on the inside of you. I'm getting ready to go to my seat tonight, but you got to understand that you were created in the image of God. And since you're created in the image of God, I've got to love myself because how can I say I love a God who I haven't seen, but I hate my brother and my sister who I see every day. And since I'm made in the image of God, now this is what you do. Let's that name and tell them, put some respect on my name. <laughs> Don't put me down, but lift me up. Don't knock me down because hurting people hurt people, but heal people heal people. There's a king in you, brother. There's a test coming out of your testimony, coming out of your test. Your mess is a message. Your stumbling block is a stepping stone. And God will use your setback as a setup for your greatest comeback. The reason I can say that is because at the age of 15, I was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer. At the age of 15, I was diagnosed with non-Hoskins lymphoma. I thought it was National Hockey League for NHL, but the doctor said, you've been diagnosed with not one, not two, not three, but four, stage four cancer. My own biological father never visited me one day in the hospital. The people who you think are praying for you are oftentimes praying on you, sitting on your sideline, uh, expecting your demise. Y'all see these waves tonight? Lost all my hair, not my self-esteem and my self-confidence. But I'm so glad that even when my earthly father didn't come to see about me, my heavenly father said you got that's on the inside of you, and you can overcome. Uh, look at that brother and tell him, I am my 
brothers and sisters. Tell that brother there's greatness that's on the inside of you. There's power that you haven't used yet. There's a king inside of you. Because Muhammad Ali, you got to hit a home run and break barriers like Jackie Robinson. Pick up the baton and run like a Jesse Owens. Look at the clock and recognize it's your time like a Benjamin Banneker. Let your ideas be ignited by the filament of a Lewis Latimer. You're modern day Marcus Garvey, Nelson Mandela, Booker T. Washington, W.B. Du Bois, Stokely Carmichael. You come from kings and you come from queens. Be the rose that grows through concrete. Bloom where you're planted. There's a king inside of you, brother, because you serve the king of kings. And his name is Jesus. And he was the world's mailman that delivered unto us salvation. Because he delivered me, you can deliver in your community. Because he delivered you, you can deliver in your home. You can deliver on your job. You can deliver and tell your testimony to say, I am my brother's keeper. Together we will rise to higher heights. That's our life stage, and this is what you do. Tell every hater to put some respect on my name. situation back to where it came from. Yes. Nobody yes. should walk away the same way that they came. Yes. Man, woman, boy, or girl, in the name of Jesus, on the count of three, begin to lift up a praise. One, two, three, lift it up. Come on, come on, lift it up. Lift it up. Come on, pray for the person whose hands are holding. Hallelujah. Come on, and we thank you, God. And we glorify your great and holy name. God, we will never be the same again. Our communities will never be the same again. Our homes will never be the same again. We receive the charge that came from you, from Dr. Connor. God, we receive the charge into our spirit. And we say, yes, Lord. We will start the business. We will write the book. We will start the company. We will build our families. We won't run from our responsibilities. Where many are running out, but we're running into it. And we thank you. We give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody clap those hands like you're smacking the devil upside of his head. Open up your mouth real loud and give God the biggest shout that you can give him. If you can do better than that, go ahead and do better than that. Open up your mouth. Come on with this praise I can play. I'll never be the same again. In Jesus' name. We're going to go into a brief intermission. Go visit 
at some of the vendors back there, tax persons back there, the insurance <laughs> man is back there, authors and book writers are back there. Are you giving